we have is uh, we have a photoconductive switch that operates at 780. Mm -hmm. We have this uh, laser from Polaronics. You guys probably have heard of them. Yeah. 15, 1560 EDFA, and then pumps the PPL in down here. And then we have 780 free space output coming through here. We have this piece here that we've designed. We've got a bunch of free space optics. Um, part of the reason for the free space optics is to route it down to the lens, you know, you're nice and collinear with the optical axis. But the real reason that we have all these extra dielectric mirrors here is that what comes out of the PPL in is a lot of 780 and a crap load of 1560. And the easiest way to filter it out is put these dielectric stacks, and then every time it hits a bounce, the 780 is like 99% reflectivity, the 1560 is basically one or two. So the photoconductive switch is down here. Uh, and this is objective lens, plus it's a little telescope uh, to do some beam expansion. And then down here is the, uh, the uh, silicon outer atmosphere. Then we have these four off axis parabolic mirrors for you know focusing collimation. The beam is focused here. And then we only do reflection because transmission at the at these frequencies or these wavelengths is kind of worthless because the tissue water absorption is so high that you can't get through any sort of tissue that's practical. So we're only looking at the reflection of the animal. And th another another thing that we 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 like to harp on is that we only want to do in vivo because once you've removed the tissue, there's a lot of other tests that are likely cheaper than terahertz to, to you know that you can apply. So all the imaging that we're doing while the animal is alive and in reflection while the tissue is still attached to the animal. So then we have a gated receiver with some RF electronics, and this is our uh, zero bias, but if you have to, or sorry, zero bias shocky diode detector from Virginia Dads. So uh, I think it's a uh, gallium arsenide shocky diode. My WR 1.5 waveguide. Responsivity is about kilovolt per watt. The RF bandwidth is a couple hundred gigahertz. Video bandwidth, I think, is around 10 to 15 gigahertz. Um, so we have really fast pulses, you know, terahertz pulses coming in, and the rectified pulses have a really broad band, about 10 gigahertz, and we use this gated receiver to, to detect the pulses. So that's the laser, 780 laser, 780 optics, terahertz optics, terahertz detector, baseband electronics, some LNAs. The rat sits here. This is the uh, uh, heat pad to keep it warm because it's an it's anesthetized, so it's asleep. And when it's asleep, it can't regulate its body temperature as well, so you got to keep it warm. Nose cone, general gas anesthesia. We keep this thing knocked out the entire time while we're imaging, and then this whole thing stays fixed, and we translate the rat X Y on this gantry. We take about a 50 millimeter field of view, and then about a half millimeter spot size or pixel uh, sorry pixel size. Right now we're working on things that keep the animal fixed, keep the source detector fixed, and just scan the beam. That's where a lot of our engineering is focused at the moment because eventually the whole goal of any of these projects is to move the people and you can't put the person on a translation stage. You have to leave them fixed and move stuff around. Also, yeah, as you notice, sources are weak. Focal plane arrays at these frequencies are not there. So flood illumination doesn't yet seem to be really a viable option. It seems like beam scanning is the best option. So 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter field of view, half micro, half millimeter pixels, about 100 by 100 pic pixels in an image, and it takes about I don't know, five minutes or so, six minutes. It's not signal to noise limited. Um, it's actually pract practical, practical constraint limited because this animal's got a bunch of tubes coming out of the area, sitting on, and if you jerk it too fast, this thing's gonna just kind of fall out. Uh, <clears throat> the water dynamics don't seem to change so fast that you need to take the image any faster than five five minutes. But eventually we'd like to kind of do, you know, get it down to the sub minute. And the signal to noise, if you look at the signal to noise considerations of the system, I don't see why less than a minute is not feasible. It's just kind of a practical optical translation problem. So this is a cart that it sits on and we do the rats right here, but uh, we also do some stuff where we try to correlate it with other Im medical imaging systems that cannot be moved. So this thing is oftentimes being moved. Uh, to other places. So it's kind of important for everything to be rather robust. And since it's not time demand, it's photoconductive switch, but it's not time demand. Since it's not time demand, we are throwing away information that we don't think is very useful for the, uh, for the, for the application. But then the system is a lot simpler, so it's probably a lot more, it's a lot more robust. And the alignment's not too big of an issue. The output power is probably uh, within the band that we're looking at, it's probably less than a milliwatt. Or, sorry, less than a microwatt. Yeah. Um, 
but we're not sure, which actually is why we we bought the Golay cell from you guys, because mm -hmm. it's really the only way we know to measure power.